I'm going to use all of these electronic parts to help give this normal Nintendo controller some of the features of this NES Advantage arcade style, the turbo buttons. In addition to having an arcade style joystick and arcade style buttons, this had a few other features like you could press the slow motion and I think it pulses the start button. So for games that use start for pause, you're basically pausing and unpausing the game rapidly and it acts like slow motion. But also if you turn on a turbo button on either of these, you can control the rate of fire and when you hold down the button, it'll just auto fire at this controllable rate. So that's the part I'm going to try to emulate with an Arduino Nano. I need to get this NES in frame, but I need to use a hold-up capacitor. That's good. That's why it's always good to keep old spare parts around the workbench. So with this project, I want to take any old NES controller, be able to plug it into this project. So I have a breakout module here made with today's sponsor, PCBWay, to allow me to plug in the NES plug, and then I have pin headers on the breadboard. So I've been using these right angle NES sockets from AliExpress, and I've just been wiring up headers, but this has already fallen apart a couple of times. And if I want to make multiple projects or have two controllers and stuff like that, it's also more stable when you can have it firmly in the breadboard. The way the NES controller works, when you plug this into the NES, all this has inside is an 8-bit parallel in, serial out shift register with a CMOS 4021 chip. And of course, each of the eight buttons has a pull-up resistor. So when you press a button, it brings it to ground. So the NES controls this. When it's ready to read in the buttons, it will latch in the state of all of the buttons right now. Then the NES will send out clock pulses and read in those eight data bits so it knows what's happening on the controller. And in special controllers like this one with turbo fire, all that's happening is in turbo mode, there's an oscillator in here that just sends the button high and low at a certain rate. And that just gets clocked into the NES and it seems like you're pressing the button quickly. So what I'm trying to do on this circuit board, instead of plugging a controller into the NES, I want to plug the controller into this breakout board. The Arduino Nano is going to tell this controller when to latch in its buttons. The Arduino Nano will clock this and read the data out. So the Nano knows what buttons are being pressed. So that was the first half of the project I worked on, and I tested it by just reading the buttons and printing out what one is currently being pressed on the serial monitor. So as I held the controller and pressed everything, I could see that I was reading the buttons. For the second half of the project, I wanted to transmit those button press states over to the NES, along with intercepting those buttons if I choose, and doing rapid fire just by having the Nano change a button high and low at a certain rate, and just let the NES now clock that out. I considered using the Nano itself to just have its shift register pins going to the NES, but I happen to have the 4021 shift register chips here, and for me, it's faster to breadboard a shift register right here than to write software and debug it. So once I had just this 4021 shift register circuit working, before I integrated it with the Nano, I wanted to test it. So I hooked it up to the NES and just used a ground wire on some of those shift register inputs to see that the NES was responding as if a button were being pressed. Then I joined the two halves of the circuit together and hooked all of that up to the NES, confirmed I could use this as a regular pass-through connection, as well as adjust the pot and have turbo fire. Here's the completed setup. This controller is wired over here going to the Nano. 
This reads it in and then sets the state of all eight buttons on eight outputs, which go over to the breadboard with a 4021 shift register. The clock, latch, and data of that shift register are going to a cable that plugs into the controller port for player one on the NES. So the NES is clocking the shift register button states in. The button states are being updated by the Nano, which is showing what's happening on the controller. I have two potentiometers on the analog inputs to set rapid fire speeds for buttons A and B. Right now, so if I'm only dealing with the fire button, I have to press it every time I want this to fire. But if I start turning up the pot, it will start slowly auto-firing. I can control it all the way up to a max. And depending on the game, you can only fire so much at a time. So now I could just hold this down and play the game. With the other jump button, there's not much benefit in auto-firing, but I could. So I don't have a schematic. This is just a wired up project. The shift register section recreating the NES circuitry is basically the same as internet circuits. But then for those eight input buttons, I do have the pull-up resistors, but instead of a button to ground, I'm just wiring eight pins to the Arduino Nano. You could look in the sketch for this and see which eight pins I'm using. So from here I can turn this into more elaborate things. I can do more features. This was just to make sure I can both read a controller and talk to the NES. And I have some more ideas I still need to try out.